Well, we've got this little gem of an article here from China. Uh, Beijing students protest lockdown amid rising scrutiny of China's zero COVID policy. Uh, a prestigious university in China, the only major country that is still pursuing zero COVID policy, has reversed strict lockdown rules that barred students from leaving their dormitory after they challenged the restrictions in a rare but peaceful protest. I mean, I've seen some things about uh, this zero policy, and it just it just seems like it's it's a way to make anger. You're you're not going to do it with the way it keeps uh, modifying you know, all the variants that we have. You're just you're just not going to get rid of COVID. Apparently, a video shared on Twitter by John Alikina an assistant professor at Peking University in Beijing, showed a large crowd gathered on Sunday outside the Wanlu compound, an off-campus dormitory for students and staff members, shouting, Living together, we demand the same rights. One student who did not want to be named due to the possibility of repercussions told NBC News that students were upset because their dorms had been locked down while staff and family members were allowed to leave the compound freely. Yeah. That would piss people off. You're doing one thing, and other people are able to do the other. She said the university tried to erect a wall that separated students and prevented them from receiving food deliveries and visiting self-study areas as well as the compound central gardens. I mean, I'm hearing all types of things from China about people being welded in their house, being taken out, this spray down stuff. Now, that's one thing. No. Apparently they're doing a lot of spraying of the streets and all this other type of stuff. And there are environmentalists that are going, hmm, that, that could become a, an environmental issue here in a little bit. Uh, but continuing here. Uh, to deal with the situation, we decided to plan a gathering to ask the university to tear down the wall and ease the increasingly flawed COVID strategy, she said. She said. In other videos shared on Chinese social media platforms before they were deleted by censors, G. Big Shock, Peking University's vice president, Chen Bojin, could be seen addressing the crowd through a megaphone. Yeah, I've, I've, I've seen that video. I, I didn't actually look at it. I, I remember seeing it. You could probably find it around. Uh, but he was telling students to return to their dorms and to discuss the issues with him directly. If the students are locked in their dorms and they can't leave, how are they going to you know, discuss the issue with them? Yeah. Guys, the first thing I want to do is put your phones down. Yeah, they don't want you videotaping it. Protect Peking University, he said while a student yelled, Is that protection? How about our rights? I've heard one thing they said, This isn't the U.S. state. This is China. You don't have those rights. The crowd then cheered as protesters tore down the temporary sheet metal wall that had been installed behind Chen. According to the student, uh, the wall was taken down on Sunday night following the protest, and a number of other requests made by the student, such as the restoration of grocery deliveries, as well as shuttle transfers between the compound and university campus, were granted. Now, I'm just, no, wh why were grocery deliveries shut down? seems like that would be an essential thing that you'd want them to have. Uh, Peking University Public Department later said the incident wasn't a protest. It was a reasonable appeal, adding that the issues raised were resolved the night it happened. They were only resolved because the students got together and protested you. Sorry, that's what happened. It was a protest. A protest at Peking University would be considered especially sensitive by Chinese officials, given the school's history at the center of major political events, including the May 4th event in 1919, the 1966-67 Cultural Revolution, and the pro-democracy demonstrations that culminated in the deadly 1989 crackdown in Tiananmen Square. Officials in, cap in, the, in the Chinese capital, which is reporting several dozen cases a day of the Omicron variant, of the virus have tightened restrictions as they tried to avoid a lockdown, 
like the one that shut down Shanghai for weeks. On Thursday, a spokesman for the suburban district of Fangxing said 670 students and staff members at a university campus were being moved to a centralized quarantine facility after at least one person tested positive, according to state media. This is another thing that, that just blows my mind. Imagine if you live in a, a uh, condo or apartment complex and one person gets COVID. They're doing the entire apartment complex. They're moving you all to the quarantine. thing. That way, instead of moving just the one person and monitoring everybody to make sure nobody else gets it, you move everybody to a COVID thing where there is COVID, where you're, you're, you're increasing the chances that they get it. I mean, ah, it, it's, it's an insanity. China's, China's zero COVID strategy, which uses strict lockdowns and mass testing to minimize cases, has faced increasing security as the rest of the world lifts restrictions, including rare criticism from the General Direction of the World Health Organization. Yeah, whatever his name is. At a news conference on Tuesday, he repeated comments he first made last week that China's approach was not sustainable in the face of the highly transmissible Omicron variant. And you also have BA.2, Stealth Omicron, BA.2.12, BA.2.12.1, XE, BA.4, and BA.5, and there's probably others. And each one of these is more and more transmissible. And they think zero strategy is going to actually work. Tedros said, who officials had shared their views with Chinese experts. But that was up to each country to how to decide to handle the pandemic. The Chinese government has defended its strategy as necessary to prevent the healthcare system from being overwhelmed. Gee, where did we hear that? Hmm... Do you recall hearing that back in March of 2020 when everyone shut everything down? Under the, dis under the guise of we'll shut down for two weeks to make sure the healthcare system isn't overloaded, it ended up being, what was it, in some places over a year? Where I was, we were opening back up, you know, by Christmas, we were opening back on up uh, it's proven to have not worked uh, but a Chinese foreign ministry spokesman said last week that Tendros's comments were irresponsible because China can't back down on their zero COVID policy and I do think you're going to see more and more of these protests I mean, if, if you look online, there are defenders. I, I've, I've watched defender videos. I've watched, I've watched both sides. The defender, people who defend this zero po COVID policy, they're, they're, they're just, uh, I, I can't think of the correct word here, but uh, it's almost, sometimes I feel like they're scared of the government, you know, Chinese government. So they're doing it on purpose to maybe help themselves. But uh, I don't know. Let me know what you think. Uh, what do you think about China's zero COVID policy? Good, bad, me personally, the wake of how COVID uh, rapidly mutates and all the variants and all that type of stuff, they're, they're never going to get zero. It, it's an impossible task. They're basically trying to dam the Mississippi with some rocks. Uh, let me know what you think. I'm Grid7, YouTube, come on over to Rumble, and I'll see you next video.